Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 22 of Java Game Development and this episode I'm going to be covering using sound with OpenAL or the Open Audio Library. My name is Oscar from the Coding Universe and let's get started. The contents of this presentation. Firstly, I'm going to be covering what OpenAL actually is and what it can do. Then I'm going to give you a demonstration to show what OpenAL is capable of. Thirdly, I'm going to be talking about OpenAL's interpretation of real-life audio. And lastly, I'm going to head over to the integrated development environment and actually get some code done. So, what is actually OpenAL? OpenAL, or the Audio Library, or Open Audio Library, is a library for rendering three-dimensional audio. And when I say three-dimensional, I mean, so in, in a way, three-dimensional that, for example, when you have headphones, when the sound is to the left of you, you can hear it to the left of you, and when it's to the right of you, you can hear it to the right of you, so as if you're left and right speaker, or headphone. It also ships with the LWJGL download, so no further steps are required to get OpenAL working once you have the workspace set up for LWJGL. Now let's get over to the demonstration. Here you can see a game called Minecraft created by Mojang, and this game uses OpenAL to get its, well, its sound done. So I'm going to play it here, and instead of looking at the graphics, I advise you to listen to the sound instead. Okay, that's enough for listening to Minecraft. Now, one of the things that could have struck your mind is that this is three-dimensional audio, as I said before. You might not be able to have uh, to dis uh, distinguish this really well from this video, but in fact, this is indeed three-dimensional sound. Also, it's really high quality and it features distortion effects. For example, when I was inside this little house here, the rain kind of went down in volume. And that's one of the things OpenAL is capable of, these effects. So now let's talk about OpenAL's interpretation of real-life audio. Now, OpenAL has three key elements it uses to, well, handle audio. The buffer, the source, and the listener. The buffer is it's, um, it's the sound data with all its distortions and whatever, but it's the sound data. The, the source is the sound location, and the listener is the one who's listening to the audio. Each of these three, well, states, no, values, objects, have certain attributes you can set. So, for example, you can set the position of the listener, the position of the source, and you can su supply the data to the buffer, and also the stuff like volume, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can specify that to the buffer. So remember these three things, buffer, source, and listener. Now let's get started with loading and storing the audio file. For this I'm going to be using the wave data class provided by LWJGL. Note that this class can only load wave files, so .wav files. Now we're going to be using two commands to accomplish this. AL gen buffers and AL buffer data. AL gen buffers takes an int buffer, nothing or an integer, and it generates a handle to the buffer. 
similar to what we've seen with vertex buffer objects. AL buffer data stores the data of a well, a sound file into the buffer. The first parameter is the handle of the buffer, the handle to the buffer. The second parameter is the format of the audio. The third parameter is the actual data. And the fourth parameter is the frequency. Now down here we can see a bit of code. And this code initializes or loads a sound file into OpenAL. So first we create an object of wave data found in the org.lbjgl.util package. And we use a static factory method called create in the class wave data. So wave data dot create between quotes sound dot wav because that's the sound file. And then I create an int buffer and I call al gen buffers on that buffer. So the value, the new buffer is stored in that int buffer. May look a little bit odd. You could also do something like int buffer handle is al gen buffers. But this is really similar to what we've done in OpenGL. And then we have al buffer data. So we call buffer.get0, which is what we've stored with the al gen buffers method. Then we call data.formats.data and dot sampler rate or sample rate to yeah specify the data. When we're done with the data, we can dispose it by calling data.dispose. And when we're done with the buffer, we can call al delete buffers buffer.get0. Now let's go to storing the source. So the source was the location. Now you can have multiple sources. So again, you can call al gen sources and then an int buffer nothing or an integer and al source which takes the source handle as first parameter a parameter name as second parameter and then the third parameter is dependent on what kind of method you you call so you have al source al source f and al source i for floats and integers Parameter names can be L, AL buffer for specifying the buffer, AL position for specifying the position, AL pitch for, well, specifying the pitch, AL gain for, I believe, specifying the volume, AL position for specifying, oh wait, that's duplicate, oops, and AL velocity for specifying the velocity of the sound in three-dimensional vector coordinates. So this time around we call int source is al gen sources. This is an alternate approach to um, int buffer, you know, what, what we had on the second and third code lines here. And then we call al source i on the source handle, say al buffer, and then um, specify the buffer. So we link that sound file to this source. This is a mandatory step if you want to use actual sounds instead of nothing. And then AL source 3F, which specifies three floats. You could also call AL source, I believe, and then just specify a float buffer containing three values. But I think this, this approach is a bit simpler. So we spe set the position and velocity to 0x, 0y, and 0z. And this coordinate system resembles the one you get via OpenGL GLU perspective. Also note that the position and velocity calls aren't necessary, but I've just put them in because it looked nicer and, well, it's kind of easier to understand how you could do that. And then once you're done with the source, you can call AL delete sources and then source. Now the last one, the listener, and this is the easiest one. So because there is only one listener in open AL, and just as with AL source, you can specify a parameter name 
and a value when you call AL listener. In this case, AL listener position, velocity, and orientation, both with three or all with three F, and I set these all to zero. And in fact, I could emit this all this code, and they would still be set to zero. But yeah. Lastly, playing sound. So I can do this by calling AL source play, AL source stop, and AL source pause methods on the source handles. So below you can see a little code example. It doesn't actually work, but it demonstrates how this could work. So you have a game, and when you're walking, you can say if walking. AL source play walk sound and else AL source GL source stop that that should be AL source stop walk sound. Now what's the code like? I'm going to head over to NetBeans and show that to you. So here I have the class open AL demo and I also have a sound file. Let me just get that sound file for you. Java game development. No, that's the wrong one. Oh no, it was somewhere here. Workspace, workspace. NetBeans projects, perhaps. Nope. Oh, come on. Ah, here we have it. So. There we have it. Thump.wav, that's the sound file or the sound file I'm going to be using for this tutorial. Actually, I'm going to turn off the sound. Here. So that's the sound file. And now I'm going to do it in NetBeans. So, firstly, I'm going to create an uh, an LWJGL display and I'm also going to specify a display mode which is going to be uh, let's say 640 by 480 and the title will be open AL demo Catch the LWJGL exception this throws. Print stack trace and exit. I'm also going to import everything in org.lwjgl and org.lwjgl.opengl. And additionally, I'm also going to statically import org.lwjgl.openal.al10 and I'm also going to import org.lwjgl.openal.al there we go now after we've created the display we can also create an open al context so you don't have to create a display but I find it easier because you can yeah well, you would do this either way if you were implementing this in your per se game or something. I just said that all wrong. I'm sorry I'm tired. So now while not display is close requested display dot update display.sync 60 display.destroy and system.exit 0 1 0 now this is the bare window without anything on it now let's say when I press the space bar I want the thumb.wav file to be played so I'm going to be typing while keyboard dot next if keyboard is key down keyboard dot key space uh, 
play the sound. Oops. There. Now I can get around to creating and loading and yeah, the sound. So I'm going to call wave data data is wave data dot create and I'm just going to call the file input stream variant. So I'm going to do that and then res slash thump dot dbav. There we go. And then you know what this is all okay. I'm just going to throw the exception because else it will screw up the program. So throw exception and those class. There we go. Now it should work. So we have the wave data created and I'm going to create a buffer. So ALGN buffers. And then I'm going to call AL buffer data buffer data dot format data dot data and data dot sample rate. And then I'm going to call data.dispose. And down here I'm going to call al.destroy because I forgot that. And al delete buffers buffer. Okay, so now that we have the buffer, we can start creating the source. So in source is al gen source is and al source i or f or i probably source al buffer so we're going to specify the buffer and then buffer now that's everything i'm going to be doing for the open al sign initialization code and now i can get along to playing the sound so al play Sound. Whoa. AL source play. Yeah, that was it. There we go. Now this should work. Let's just see if it works. So, yeah, it did work, surprisingly. We've loaded an audio file, a WAV file, and we've played it using OpenAL. Cheers. Okay, so that was what the code was like. That's the end of this presentation. If you have any questions, you can comment below, tweet at the Coding Universe, mail the Coding Universe at gmail.com, or send me a private message on YouTube. Some of my other videos you may have missed but still may enjoy. Using JInput, in that video I explain how to use JInput to use game pads and stuff with LWJGL. Smooth Transitions, a video of mine that I really put a lot of work into and I think really is um, useful but hasn't gotten the, the exposure I desired. So. In that video, I explain how to create smooth transitions using scene and cosine functions. And then, lastly, advanced rendering, which is a real must for OpenGL rendering. If you're interested in serious OpenGL rendering, I highly recommend you check out that video. Okay, bye.